What's going on YouTube? Jeans here, back again, bringing you guys some more competitive ranked double battles for Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. In today's video, we are going to be showcasing Milotic on the rank regulation E ladder. You guys already know the deal. If you do enjoy the content at any time, make sure you support me as a content creator by leaving a like on today's video. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, click that big red subscribe button so you know when all of my videos go live. But Milotic is one of those Pokemon that is just solid all around in any competitive format there is. Every time Milotic is released into a game, it just becomes within the meta. It has great typing, it has great stats, great move pool, everything about it is perfect. So like I said, we're gonna be showcasing it in Regulation E with this cool team. It's got Roar Moon, Landers, and Iron Hands from the older meta and then we got nine tails milotic and ogre palm which are all brand new pokemon in scarlet and violet but our first pokemon that i do want to talk about for today's team preview is going to be roaring moon roaring moon's a great fast heavy hitting attacker with protosynthesis and booster energy as its item rocket acrobatics knock off dragon dance and protect in our second slot we got alone nine tails and alone nine tails is going to be a staple in regulation e. it's great typing and it's a great pokemon for weather control this one has Snow Warning alongside with Lake Clay and then Rockin' Blizzard, Moonblast, Aurora Veil, and Protect. In our third slot, we got Landers with Intimidate and my favorite item for him right now, the Choice Scarf. It's got Terror Blast with the Flying Terror Type, Stomping Tantrum, Rock Slide, and U-Turn. In our fourth slot, we got Iron Hands. Iron Hands is a great Pokemon within the Trick Room and even outside the Trick Room. It's got Quirk Drive with the Assault Vest, Rockin' Fake Out, Wild Charge, Drain Punch, and Heavy Slam to deal with those fairy type Pokemon. In our fifth slot, we got the one and only Milo Dick. Milo Milo, as I like to call it, with competitive ability and the Citrus Berry as item. It's got Scald for Stab Move, Recover for HP Recovery, Icy Wind for some Speed Control, and last but not least, it is Rocking Protect. In our final slot, we got the top tier Ogre Pond for Regulation E with Mold Breaker and the Hearth Flame Mask. It's got Ivy Cudgel, Wood Hammer, Follow Me, and Spiky Shield. Guys, you want to rent this team for yourself? Run the code is at the top right hand corner, but let's get after it. Let's hop on that regulation E ladder and look to showcase Milo Tick. First match coming at you guys, and we're going up against a Tropius and Empoleon team. Really two cool Pokemon to actually be used on the rank ladder, so I'm super excited to be versing them. They also have Fluttermane, Shen Pao, and then Ursaluna, Blood Moon form, and Ogre Pond, just like us. But how should I play this one? Who should I go into? Weather control seems perfect for us. We can just grab it and we can pop a roar belt with nine tails. So that is exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna also lead Roy Moon. I might lead Roy Moon here. Got great speed, high attack stat. If we can get off that roar belt, that would be perfect. But they also have a lot of physical attackers and a competitive Pokemon with Empoleon. So I might not want to go Landers for the lead. I'm going to lead the Ogre Pond. I think Ogre Pond is going to be a solid lead for us. And we will bring Milotic and Warning Moon as back in. Or I could lead Landorus. Hmm. Hmm. I really want Landorus, but actually, yeah, you know what? That's perfect. I I'm cool with this. As much as I want Landorus, I feel like we're fine with the Pokemon that we brought in here. I feel like Landorus would be great, but the Pokemon that we have is a little bit better. But let's get after it. Let's look to showcase Milotic in regulation E. I already used it in the past, but I didn't really like hone in on Milotic. Like Milotic might have been on a few teams that I showcased on the rank ladder, but it hasn't been a Pokemon where I was just like, oh, we gotta use it, we gotta showcase it. But Empoleon and Ursula to come out here, this is the exact reason I did not leave the Intimidate Pokemon. But now we get to go into you. Beautiful Nine Tails, and I get off Soror Veil, no problem. No problem. So I got Mold Breaker, I can hit Pokemon really, really hard too. And I'm just gonna set up the Roar Veil, and I might just terrestrialize you and really pick who I want to hit hard, right? I think I'd rather hit Ursaluna. Or I could just go Ivy Cudgel and pretty much KO and pull on if I want to. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna KO and pull on because Ursaluna is most likely to Thrasslize with an Ice-type Pokemon on the field and a Grass-type Pokemon. I see Ursaluna potentially going into a Terra more than Empoleon. So I'm just gonna put the mask on. I'm gonna get that beautiful attack boost. I'm gonna look to just deal some big time damage in Empoleon. Look at that embody aspect. Plus one all day. We love it. Are they terrestrializing? They are. And this should be Ursaluna more so than Empoleon. Let's see. Is it Ursaluna? It is. Okay, so I make the correct call. Read into that. And he's just gonna go straight for everything, which I don't mind. I do not mind. So as long as Empoleon doesn't protect, we pretty much KO that Pokemon. And you can really get after it that way. And we get off a War Bell, which is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Lovely War. So Aurora Bell out and about, we get to drop a nice beautiful Ivy Cudgel, coming after Empoleon, 
It was part seal typing, so yeah, he's dead. He a goner. He's a goner. And just neutral up against him. And we take him out, no problem. Get him on out my face. Hyper Voice now flies here. We got the War Bell, and we're tanking pretty well. And you also got Throat Spray? You rocking Throat Spray? Yeah, you got that Throat Spray. So he's going to Throat Spray, get the boost here, and now he's probably going to bring out... I was going to say Shen Pao, but it's going to be Flutter. Flutter Main comes out here. The Flutter Main's got some speed on it, which kind of annoys me, but we should be fine dealing with it. I mean, I think we double down in the Ursa Luna more so than anything right here. And we kind of just go from there, right? Because I got Blizzard flying, Flutter Main could protect, Flutter Main could attack, but I have a War Bell and some too great back in Pokemon. The Flutter Main ends up protecting. Perfect. Even better. We're playing pretty well here. Really well, I should say really well. Reading that protect, just getting after it this way. So did we get a freeze too? No, no freeze, but Ivy Cudgel's still flying. This this should KO, right? Yeah, dude, he hits way too hard. This is gonna be easy first match for us. Easy first match. I would love to use my I'm kinda hoping to KO one of my Pokemon. But we can go from there. But a lot of times when I'm rocking a nine tails on my team, if I see the other team has no weather control, I just lead the nine tails. It's super simple, just put up a war belt, it has great speed, and just lasts for pretty much the whole match. But from here, now I am going to actually still Blizzard just so I can take off Focus Ash and Shed Pallet and do damage over onto over onto uh, Flutter Main, and then I'm just going to double down and go with an Ivy Cudgel, and they just cancel battles. First match is a perfect sweep. We killed it right there. Second match on its way, and let's look to use Milotic a little bit more here in match number two. But we're going up against a Wellspring Ogre Pond team with a bunch of meta Pokemon. They got Hisuian Arcanine, they got Iron Hands, they also have Fluttermane, and then Urshifu and Tornadus. So Tornadus might come out here for a lead, probably going to come out here for a lead. And I'm going to lead Milotic because one, they have an Intimidate Pokemon. And another reason is we got Icy Wind for a bit more speed control. So I'm going to go Milotic here, and I'm also going to go... I was going to go Ninetales, but I feel like if we just go Ninetales, they're just going to go straight into Tornadus and just change up weather from there. So, you know what? We're just going to go Milotic. And on top of that, we could go Iron Hands. We could go Iron Hands. I think we save Iron Hands. I think we go War Moon here with Ogre Pond and Lando. Choice Scarf Lando is going to be nice. So, let's lock that one in. So, first match went pretty well for us. Just popped the mask on Ogre Pond and kind of went off from there. Set up the War Rail. Made, made a few good reads, but it was just it was just GG's from the start. Once we set up that War Bell, I was like, you guys are not KOing us, and I'm doing too much damage with Ogre Palm. And it was just a game from there. But again, I think they're going to lead Tornado, so I'm kind of hoping they're leading Hisuian Arcanine just to trigger competitive. And we'll see. They do not. Not. You don't lead either of them. Either of them is down on the ground. So now, from here, I pop my post synthesis. My attack is through the roof, which is gorgeous. And I think from here, it's just a simple icy one, just to slow down Fluttermane if we can, and a Protect here. Yeah, just in case Fake Out wants to come into War and Moon, right? We're just going to Protect. The Protect comes out from the moon. I could Terrasalize next turn if I want to. And Dazzling Gleam's going to fly, so he is just Wild Charging and Dazzling Gleam, which is a very smart play. Milotic is going to probably die here, right? Actually, we outspeed, which is gorgeous, so I get off an Icy one, which is huge. So we get off a big time Icy Wind. Wild Charge probably coming into the slot. I'm kind of scared, right? Oh no, it's going into War Moon. We like that. We like that a lot. We like that a lot. A lot, a lot. So from here, now I'm just going to uh, go Lando. Just so I can get it Intimidate onto Iron Hands. And on top of that, we can dodge any electric moves. And I'm going to Terrastalize him and just Acrobatics. Because I got boost energy. I'll get the boost. And I think this should be enough to take off Flutter Main. Plus, Fluttermane is minus one on speed, so that could be big for us. There's the hard swap into Lando. We got Choice Scarf. We can choice him later. And we will have Milotic for later, who's such a good back end Pokemon. So, big time Intimidate onto the Iron Hands, as it, that's a physical attacker. And we hit the Strasslize button, and we're looking to get after it. So, I was actually super stoked to see that uh, Iron Hands did not go after Milotic there, because we get to keep it for later. So, now I get the Terrasalize off. And Iron or War Moon should outspeed Fluttermane here because Fluttermane's minus one. And I'm thinking this should KO. This is exactly why I Terrasalize because I want to just KO this Pokemon. And it does. Perfect. So everything working out beautifully. And I'm really hoping that Wild Charge going into that Lando slot. Oh my god. I'm so good at this game. I'm killing it today. I'm killing it today on the reads. Killing it on the reads. 
It's a big time place for us. Um, he's probably just gonna wild charge my uh my Roar and Moon slot. So now would be a good time to protect and then choice into a move such as. Mm, I would love the Terra Blast here, but Stomp Tantrum could be the play. Iron Hands actually might swap. You might protect too. I'm gonna Stomp Tantrum you, and you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna double down with Dax. You're probably gonna Terrasse Celeste the Bear, right? Bear's looking scary, but I think doubling down with attacks right now is actually a perfect play. So yeah, he's gonna end up terrestrializing the bear. That's totally fine. Going straight water, I'm guessing. That's fine. Acrobat should still do a nice chunk of damage. And Stomp Attachment is gonna fly across onto the Iron Hands and still do a good chunk of damage. And on top of that, it's Intimidate, so I don't see it KO in any of my Pokemon unless they put me really low. So Stomp Attachment was out here. Massive amount of damage. We love it. Acrobat now flies. We got some speed cooking. And that is going to almost KO. So that would have been a big time KO. Surgeon Strikes comes out here. That's going to KO Lando all day. And I'll bring out Milotic. So now I get to bring out Milotic. Wild Charge is going to come into the... Uh, the Roaring Moon slot. But we should be able to get this up. And then this thing could take some really cool damage. So I was going to protect the Roaring Moon. But I figured we just uh, get off some nice damage. So really cool comes through here. I'm going to now bring out Milo. Milo is a good, pretty decent counter to soaking up shots up against... Uh, Urshifu. And we're looking right at Iron Hand's hands. You guys see that? That angle was ridiculous. But from here, I am just going to Scald you, and I'm just going to simply... Acrobatics you. Because you hit through Protect, so if you're going to go for Aqua Jet, you can just go for Aqua Jet. So he ends up hard swapping the Iron Hands. He wants to fake out for later turns. And he going into... This is Ogre Prime. This could be... Yeah, so you're just going to water absorb this shot, and Aqua Jet is going to fly, which is probably going to KO, right? That's, that's real scary. That's real scary. Hmm. The good swaps from our opponent are playing really well right now, and I really wish I would have went after Urshifu here. But Skull is going to fly through here and do nothing. It gets absorbed by Ogre Pond. Alright, so all I have left is my Ogre Pond. And I'm not going to lie, the Pokemon are looking very, very scary. A bit too scary. Really scary. So from here... I'm just gonna Icy Wind. And who do I Woodhammer? That's the real question. I mean, I could just Ivy Cudgel you and get off some big time damage. But Woodhammer actually does more. I'd rather get a KO Urshifu. The Surgeon Strikes flies here. And this is gonna KO me, isn't it? You're really outspeeding the Pond. Actually, wait a minute. Can we soak that? That's cutting it close. I don't think we can, though. Yeah, we're not soaking it. That's game, set, match. That is game, set, match. See, if Urshfu didn't have that ability where he hits through protects, I definitely would have spiky shield there. But our opponent's just going to make this comeback here onto us, and that's going to be game, set, match, even though they're missing the power whip, which we love. They're missing the power whip. So they make some great calls in today's video. It's just we get overpowered by Urshfu. We get overpowered by Urshifu, which is tough, because you can't even protect to kind of get rid of them. But I'm just going to run this battle. We'll use Milotic a little bit in the third and look to grab ourselves a winning record. Final match is here. We're going up against a Gengar and Titar team. I absolutely love both this Pokemon, so hopefully they'll bring them in there and we get to see them here in match number three. But more importantly, we're looking for a winning record. We are one and one here, and I would love to use Milotic a little bit more. They got Heatran, they got Amoongus, they also have Shen Pao, and they have Tornadus. So I'm just going to go into Milotic, and on top of that, I think, mm, ah, I was going to say, we could go into Ninetales, but I forgot. Tornadus easily can change up weather, no problem. So I'm going to go Milotic, and I'm also just going to go Warm Moon here. I really like this lead. I think we can get after it that way. And then on top of that, go Ogre Pond and Lander. So same squad from last time. I have faith in it. And we're going to look to grab ourselves a winning record here. And use Milotic a little bit more. Considering Milotic, we swept in match number one. Then we only got to use it a little bit. We hard swapped it. And then we kind of went from there. But Milotic is just a great little support Pokemon. Slash decent attacker with some bulky uh, defensive stats. That's pretty good all around. But they're going to end up leading a Moogus. Which kind of annoys me. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Mouth or Amoogus annoys me. Really does. Spore City Rage Powder can come out here. They got a lot of different things they can do. The chances are Gengar is Sash. I like the Icy Wind here for speed control. So I am going to pop Icy Wind. And I'm also just going to Thrasilize. And I'm going to go into an Acrobatics here. I mean, I could go into a Knockoff. But, hmm. Acrobatics definitely going to play. 
I'm just gonna double down to Gengar. So we could actually go Rage Powder and Trick Room. I'm almost positive Gengar learns Trick Room. And it's just such a cool Pokemon, yo. Gengar is so sick. Gengar is just so cool. So I end up terrasizing Warren Moon. Warren Moon just fully ut utilizes his Terror type, so that's why I like actually terrasizing him a lot more than a lot of other Pokemon. And I'm gonna go straight flying. Your Sludge Bomb's gonna come out here. That does half my damage. Acrobax now flies. This is actually big time because we hit up on Gengar. I was gonna say it's probably sashed. And I ice you in it down. So that's beautiful. It's lovely. But, but, small problem right here. One, you got cursed body. You just dis disabled acrobatic. And two, Amoongus is putting somebody to sleep. I don't know who, but you're putting somebody to sleep. And I don't like that. Not one bit. Not one bit. So Gengar goes out. And you're Sporn. Milo. Not my Milo. I'm making a video here, Amoongus. I'm trying to showcase Milo. But hey, we got off a nice big icy wind. Now could be a good time to actually swap. Hmm. Do I swap? I could just protect and waste out turn here. That's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm actually just going to scold you down. If I if I can, I'll, I'll be asleep this turn. I could hard swap and maybe just intimidate, but if I hard swap, then Ice Spinner is just doing something to protect damage. So I really need Milo to wake up here. I'm just gonna protect this turn. Like, Shen Pao just rips in the, in the Pokemon I have right now. I need Milo just to wake up and get some speed control down. So he ends up going for the beautiful Rage Powder. Of course, Rage Powder's big time here. And Ice Spinner is going to get blocked. So I, I'm just going to spam Icy Wind until Milo wakes up, right? I could actually go for another double protect, but we're dead here. We're so dead. I don't feel like hard swapping into any other Pokemon. Because I'd rather have Landers come in the back end with Rock Slide. And actually get some work done. So I'm just going to go Ice Human here. I think I try to double protect here. And I see if I can land it. Because we know Ice Finish coming into that slot. And Shen Pao actually protects. Okay, cool. So that gives me an extra turn to try to wake up here. And I end up not even landing the, the double protect. That's cool. Maybe I should have just attacked that turn. But Milo ends up waking up, which is massive. Ice Human's going to fly. Beautiful. And we will deal a little bit more damage to Amoongus. So I wonder what Amoongus is going for here. You're spawning me. Yeah, okay. You just, you just like put me to sleep. So chances are he's going to take out the Warring Moon. Um, I'm just going to spam another Icy Wind here. He's probably going to put Milo to sleep next turn. And we'll just, we'll just go from there. We'll just go from there. I forgot Acrobat's disabled. <laughs> I'll just go for a knockoff into Amoongus. God dang Amoongus, yo, it's so annoying. So he ends up withdrawing Amoongus. And Heatran comes out here. So Heatran comes out. Chen Pao's gonna use the Ice Spinner. He is gonna pick up KO. And now's a perfect time. An absolute perfect time to bring out Lando. So I'm gonna get Speed Control here. I'm gonna Icy Wind these guys down. Take off Focus Sash. Actually, no, Chen Pao is not working with Focus Sash. Gengar had it. But I love slowing down Shen Pao. Plus, I have Choice Scarf. So, I have options here. I think Rock Slide's probably going to be my play. But I could also go into a Stop Control. So, I get off the big time Intimidate. He's looking a little scary over there. But I'm just going to go for a Scald into you. And I think I'm going to just go into Rock Slide. Actually, we'll double down to Shen Pao. Mm, I think Shen Pao has a chance of protecting here. Actually, no, we're going to double down. He's probably just going to attack Lando, so... I'm going to go Rock Slide. I am going to go for the Scald. And we'll go from there. And he's just going to Terrestrialize. That's got to be Heatran, right? A little bit of grass action. Yeah. Heatran just thrives with that with that Terror type. It really does. So he ends up going into grass. I have Ogre Pond with Mold Breaker. I can hit through the Flash Fire ability and KO that. So I'm actually happy that I... Double down in the Shen Pao, but I spoke a bit too soon. Maybe we get off a of flinch on the heat train. That'd be pretty big. So Rock Slide comes out here. Time for the big time flinch. Come on, I need a flinch. If I need a flinch, I need it now. I need it more than ever. Skull's gonna get blocked here. And I need the flinch. Give me the flinch. Show it to me. Nope, Terra Blast flying there. So Terra Blast probably going into Milo, right? And Milo has a, actually a chance of soaking this. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Love you, Milo. I got the citrus berry, so I'm soaking, I'm soaking shots. I'm out here soaking shots. 
So I could actually recover and waste out more turns if I want to. But again, I'm just going to double down to Shen Pao. Could you potentially hard swap Shen Pao? Yeah, back into a Moongus, which, ooh, that's a little bit of a problem. If that's the case, and I think that's going to happen. I think that's going to happen. I'm just going to go for an Icy Wind here. And I could actually make that read and just swap into Ogre Pond. I could. I could easily make that read. But you could definitely just attack my Lando. I think you're going to swap. I knew it. I should have swapped right into Ogre Pond. I knew it. I read that from 60,000 miles away, and I did not trust my gut. Did not trust my gut. That's a big mistake. Big misses stake, dude. The Moon is going to dodge the Rock Slide. We do chunk up some damage on the Heatran, which I love. Icy Wind's going to fly, and I'm missing somebody with this. Amoongus. Amoongus is dodging attacks out here. Amoongus is just dodging attacks. So Terror Blast is going to come out here. It's going to finish off Milo. And that's fine by me, because now I get to bring out Ogre Pond. We got a bit, bit of speed control here, which is lovely. So now I bring out the Ogre Pond. They don't have Terror type. I'm going to attack the... the, 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 the hmm... I think I just attacked the Amoongus with Ivy Cudgel, right? Yeah, it makes the most sense, because Heatran's not going to be able to KO me. And I'll just go for a Rock Slide on top of that. Maybe try to get try to get a flinch. Third time's a charm for a flinch. But yeah, I should have just, just read my gut. Rage Powder comes out here. I'm cool with that. We're going to say bye-bye to Amoongus with this Ivy Cudgel. And again, we're going to hope for a flinch with Rock Slide. The Rock Slide doing some work. Ivy Cudgel coming in hot here. And taking out Amoongus. Okay. So I believe Landorus is going to be able to outspeed everybody. And Heatwave's going to fly here and doing a lot of damage. You got a crit. That actually... Why did just threw the match? Did that throw the match? Maybe. It might have threw the match. That might have just threw the match. Because now we can Sucker Punch a KO me. But I can just go Ivy Cudgel. Could also go follow me. But I think Ivy Cudgel and Rock Slide supply. If Shen Pao protects, I think Rock Slide should be able to KO. And if he doesn't protect and he goes for Sucker Punch, see, that's fine. I was going to say, then Ivy Cudgel can come in here and KO the Shen Pao. But I'm hoping Rock Slide can just finish this one off. Correct? Make me proud here. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. And now it's 2v1. Alright, so, cool. I made the right call there. Made the right call. So, Milotic granting us some nice lovely speed control. Love Milotic and onto the Steam. And then these guys in the back end just been cleaning up messes. The Shen Pals, the final Pokemon. I think we just go into Ivy Cudgel and we just keep spamming Rock Slides. And hope we don't miss, right? Sucker Punch is going to fly here. And I'm able to soak that. Awesome. Awesome, dope. But I think that was the only way he would have won. Is if he would have KO'd Ogre Pump with Sucker Punch. But he's not. I'm bringing out the Ivy Cudgel and I'm saying GG. So 2-1 for today's video. Absolutely love to see him. And making our opponent quit. Turn off their console right as we won the battle. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, a 2-in-1 winning record with this Milotic team. This Milotic team is actually very good on the meta, so if you guys want to use this to rank up, I highly recommend it. Rental code is at the top right-hand corner. You got beautiful Pokemon like Ninetales, Ogre Pond, Iron Hands, Landers, Worm Moon, and like I already mentioned, Milotic to really carry your way and actually push high ranks in the Master Tier. But guys, that is going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy the content, don't forget to smash that like button for me. And if you're new here, click that big red subscribe button so you know when all of my videos go live. Seriously, you guys rock out. Make sure you spread the positive today, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.